Okay, so let me show you something that I've been having a lot of fun with the last couple months. That is this guy right here behind me, the Starfield Optics 8-inch Astrograph. I'm using that, it's an F4 Astrograph as it comes, but thanks to Starzona, uh, Steve down at Starzona there, uh, he sent me one of the Nexus Reducer Correctors for the, specifically for Newtonians, F4 uh, Newtonians, and that uh, brings it down to F3 actually. So this is a light collecting beast, and it has been producing some fabulous results. I've been using refractors for the last five years, um, varying degrees of refractors uh, in terms of cost. The interesting thing is though that my results so far have been really fabulous using this setup. Um, an 8 inch aperture with uh, the Nexus reducer corrector bring it down to an f3 which is really fast so i want to give you a little tour tell you a little about the telescope and the setup that i'm using not a sales pitch just putting this information out there for you guys to discern and decide for yourself maybe you're interested in looking into something like this i personally think this is a really interesting setup for someone getting started now i know that refractors are often said to be the go-to for beginners and I would agree with that um, I think I got my best results when I started using an 80 millimeter refractor um, it's they're simple they're, you don't have to worry about collimation and stuff like that but collimation and I know that scares a lot of people it's a nasty word kind of like dynamic background extraction in Pixinsight <laughs> It, it scares people and it's some they, they think it's difficult to do collimation is really not that difficult to do once you understand the basics of it the other thing too is there's aids now that can assist you in getting good collimation um, i personally on this setup here i use the uh, ocal uh, electronic collimator and um, i'll have to do a video about that i think there's some videos out there already talking about the ocal um, it, it's a really nice uh, little piece of hardware that uh, is a camera that actually f uh, fits in to the uh, the focus tube and allows you to collimate the, the secondary and the primary mirrors, get things all nicely lined up. And it did a really good job. I was, I was quite happy with the result. And the images, I think, show that uh, the collimation is good. If you're considering upgrading to a refractor, a bigger refractor, and we know refractors can cost a lot of money, I think this could be an alternative that uh, is worth considering. So going with something like a, an 8-inch uh, uh, F4 Newtonian reflector with a, a good reducer corrector such as the Star, uh, Star Zona uh, Nexus reducer. Um, it's a fabulous combination. Um, some people are very diehard refractor. I think I was for the last five years. I'm kind of wondering if this is a, a nice way to go, especially with the CMOS cameras now. Um, a fast Newtonian, a good light bucket, uh, fast F ratio, and the CMOS cameras that you can do short exposures at high gain. Uh, that's something that I'm actually experimenting with. I've been experimenting with that the last uh, few images. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting shorter exposures and I'm doing a high at high gain. And I'm getting really interesting results. Okay, so this is the Starfield Optics 8 inch astrograph as we can see here and I've got the uh, QHY 268M CMOS camera connected to it with the QHY uh, filter wheel, 7 position filter wheel and Optolong filters are inside there. That's my go-to filter brand for uh, uh, imaging filters. Really excellent quality, um, affordable and they perform really well. I'm currently using the 3 nanometer narrowband set and uh, the uh, broadband LRGB in the filter wheel. Um, what else do I got going on here? So here's the uh, ASCAR FMA 180. Um, this actually is an interesting uh, little setup. It works, uh, it performs actually really well too. Um, and I use it for guiding right now, but it also doubles as my uh, lunar scope as well. It's a triplet uh, refractor um, that uh, well, I should say it's a triplet astrograph that um, I'm able to actually get the entire moon in there and uh, get some nice uh, resolution, um, get some good images uh, using, and I'm not using anything fancy, that's just an ASI 120 uh, monochrome camera there, but it allows me to tour the moon, have a look at things, and that's pretty cool. I could probably do the sun too if I put a solar filter on the front of it, um, but right now it's just, uh, I'm doing some lunar, 
uh, viewing and uh, I've taken some video of the moon uh, to try and get some photos uh, using the Ascar FMA 180 uh, but primarily right now it's being used for guiding alongside of the Starfield Optics 8 inch and it's been working really well. So I've got my little Pico PC here, mini PC, that is very small. I can, if you see my hand alongside it, um, that is a mini PC I picked up on Indiegogo. And it's pretty, pretty tiny, um, lightweight, uh, full, full blown PC though, running Windows 11 and uh, Nina and uh, uh, all that good stuff. And it's been working out really well, been happy with it. It lightened the load on the overall setup. I was able to take off a counterweight actually, which was really cool. I'm using the stock focuser on the 8 inch. I haven't modified the setup. Now, the reason behind that was could you get a better focuser? Yeah, you could. Um, the focuser that comes with the Starfield Optics is, is good, but it could be better. Now, that being said, I wanted to keep this setup as close to factory as I possibly could because the idea was this is a very good contender for someone looking to uh, either get into astrophotography uh, that has some knowledge of it or is looking to upgrade uh, change up their system move into a different class of imaging optics uh, so this is something to consider so i wanted to keep everything as as close to factory as i could so me you know keeping this uh, focuser the stock focuser on and using it was really important and i haven't had uh, too much issue with it at all it's been working quite well um, the only thing that I had to make adjustments for was the tension on the focuser, the draw tube. I had to adjust that um, a little bit um, and it took, a, took maybe two or three uh, goes to get it right. But once I got it locked in, dialed in, um, the focus uh, draw tube uh, was able to lift and the motor was able to lift the uh, the camera and the filter wheel without any problems and uh, do its job for auto focusing so okay so let's have a look inside so there we go we've got our eight inch primary mirror at the bottom there as we can see and the secondary up front here in the center and it is it's all blacked out inside I haven't had any reflection issues at all everything's been working well on that end of it so nothing you know reflector telescopes are pretty straightforward stuff they're they're simple designs really you got a, a primary mirror that captures the light uh, bounces it back up to the secondary mirror and then it goes um, out the side to the uh, through the focus tube here the draw tube and uh, uh, up to the camera sensor um, so it's a pretty simple design but like I said with the Nexus reducer in, uh, installed I get f3 with it and um, that Nexus reducer is right here it's inside it, it sits inside the draw tube so I can't really show it to you but it is there and it works really well in combination with this uh, setup so I'm getting like I said I'm getting f3 and it is pretty pretty cool stuff the Starfield Optics, uh, the interesting thing to note though is with the Starfield Optics, they have a 10 inch version of this astrograph as well. The 10 inch version, um, the tube is actually extended more, so the focuser is set back farther from the opening. This may help with uh, condensation on the secondary mirror. Interesting enough, we've had some really humid nights here and I haven't had any issues with the uh, Starfield Optics um, secondary doing up. Uh, but on the 10 inch model, like I said, the focuser is set back farther. So you've got a bit of uh, uh, more of a, a dew shield um, sort of uh, thing happening with that uh, particular model uh, versus the 8 inch. But as I said, the 8 inch has been, f been performing great. Haven't had any issues with it. So um, wh whether you get the 8 inch or you get the 10 inch, uh, you'll be uh, really, really happy with uh, either of them.
so really appreciate you guys tuning in watching the video don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber that uh, helps the channel grow liking and commenting actually helps as well because it shows youtube that this video is of interest and worthwhile for other people that maybe aren't familiar with my channel or are interested in this information that I'm trying to extend to the uh, astrophotography community. So uh, hit that like button, give me a comment, uh, let me know what you guys are up to and what you think of the, the Newtonian reflector astrograph setup F3 versus a, a refractor. Uh, that would be an interesting conversation to see unfold um, what everyone's opinion is of that. And we'll see you again in another video. So for now, take care and clear skies.